In the Tibetan Buddhist calendar, the eighth month is the harvest season. Wheat and highland barley are ready for threshing at this time, and the farmland turns into a vast golden expanse. Kosong is a small village near the town of Zedong, the capital city of Shan'an Prefecture. For generations, villagers here have made a living from farming. Bai Ma Yundan and Yang Jin, a couple in the village, are both nearly 50 years old. They have four daughters and eight grandchildren. They are living a moderately comfortable life compared with other families in the village. The couple is going shopping today, for tomorrow is encore, the day of giving thanks for the harvest. In Tibetan, Ong means farmland, while Kor refers to parade. Literally, the word means make circuits around the farmland. Encore is a traditional festival in farmland areas of Tibet, celebrated just before the autumn harvest begins. This is a market in the town of Zedong. Yangjin plans to buy some vegetables, but she is dazzled by the vast array of goods and the enthusiastic vendors in the market. On her way back home, she wants to buy a school bag for her younger daughter, but she hasn't found a suitable one. Bai Ma comes back home earlier than Yang Jin. He is decorating the rooms together with his daughters. The daughter takes out cushions and puts them on the floor. Bai Ma is spreading straw and leaves over the floor, a local custom for the festival. Straw and leaves are strewn to pray for a good harvest and express thanks to the gods for their blessings. After they complete the decorating, the families sit down to discuss what to do during the festival. Tomorrow is the first day of encore. Every family in the village will choose a person to take part in the farmland parading. The family decides to let the second oldest daughter, Chamchub, go this time. In Shan'an, Angkor usually lasts for three days. The first day is for the parading ceremony. Chamchub gets up early to make preparations for the holiday with her family. Buddhist scriptures should be carefully wrapped and put into a delicately carved wood box covered with hada, an auspicious silk scarf. Women wear them when participating in the parading activity. The box is called chumga in Tibetan and is used to pray for blessings. Villagers are ready and waiting at the village office. Women are wearing splendid Tibetan costumes and precious jewels holding dadaar, made of wheat, highland barley, and colored hada. Men hold scripture banners in various colors, called sada, or pilo gangsa, all symbols of blessings. The ceremony begins with offering sacrifices to Yula, the god of protection. Ordinarily, the statue of Yula is enshrined in temples. Today, it will be placed on a sedan chair and carried by four villagers to parade around the farmland. 
villagers are scattering gada in front of the temple to bring good fortune. Monks are blowing horns and the procession begins. They will march around all the farms of the village, a journey that will take almost half a day. At the entrance of the village, the procession is stopped by villagers who are offering hada to Yula, one after another. They even pass under the sedan chair, which they believe will bring good luck. Angkor dates back 1,500 years. During the primitive period of Bonism, the festival was celebrated to pray for harvest and protection by goddesses of the land. There were a total of 12 goddesses who were responsible for different areas. For example, the goddess of land in Lhasa differed from the one in Shanan. During the festival, people walked through their own farmlands to seek blessings and protection by their own goddess of land. In the late 8th century, the Nyingma sect of Tibetan Buddhism was dominant and some new elements were added to the festival, such as chanting and praying for harvest, as the result of the influence of the sect. By the 14th century, the Galu sect gained ruling status, and some elements of this sect were gradually seen in the celebration of Angkor. For example, during the procession, participants held high Buddhist statues and recited Buddhist scriptures. Later, recreational activities were held, such as horse racing, archery, and dancing and singing. The procession takes a rest. People are drinking strong butter tea or barley wine. The smoke from Song, the incense burning ritual, is rising, and the most popular sacrificial ceremony in Tibet has begun. It is said the rising white smoke can communicate with the gods in heaven. When entering the farmland area, monks blow horns again and women wave dadar in their hands. All are shouting yangu shou and jiagu shou, meaning good luck is coming, God is coming. By noon, the procession is paraded around half the farmland. Participants stop in the woods and their families bring lunch to them. After lunch, the participants change into summer clothes. In the evening, they will don another set of garments for the Gorsier dance. In a sense, this is a show of the wealth of families. At 2 p.m., the procession returns to the village. There, they hold the final ceremony of the day's sacrifice, the Bandan Shabu. After entering the yard, the procession moves from the outer circle to the inner circle and disperses according to the planned route. Then they form a circle again and toss zanba, a roasted highland barley flour, into the air to thank the gods for granting a good harvest and to pray for good weather in the coming year. In the afternoon, people sing and dance and exchange toasts with one another. They go on drinking sprees until midnight. The Yongjins go to see the performances in the village auditorium the next day. All these performances are designed and presented by the villagers. Yongjin's daughter, Chancho, also performs a dance.
Since Tibet is such a vast area and the harvest time varies in different regions, Angkor is not held simultaneously in all areas of Tibet, and recreational activities differ. For instance, in Lhasa, people put on bullfights and stage Tibetan operas, while in Jiangzi and Shigasa, horse racing, archery, and wrestling are on the schedule. During the harvest festival, villagers sing and dance, entertaining themselves while entertaining the gods. Today's Angkor, rather than a ceremony to pray for the harvest, has become a time for displaying beauty and wealth, as well as offering various forms of entertainment before the busy harvest season starts. The three-day Angkor festival is coming to an end, and the bustling harvesting work is about to begin. Early in the morning of the third day, Baima and Yongjin get up and check the crop's growth in the fields. The heavy gold wheat tassels indicate that there will be another good harvest this year.